iOS 12 is currently in developer beta. It'll go into public beta sometime by the end of June and be released to everyone this fall. It's got a bunch of flashy new features like Siri shortcuts and Memoji, but it also has a few small but really important fixes to things that were super frustrating in previous versions. Now, beta means beta, so everything I'm about to say is subject to change, from the way the UI looks and works to the status of the fixes themselves. But that also makes this the perfect time to weigh in on them. First, multiple Face ID attempts. When iPhone 10 launched, if Face ID failed, you couldn't ask it to try again the way you could Touch ID. Instead, you had to turn off and turn back on, like some kind of monster. Now, if you swipe down and it doesn't work, all you have to do is swipe down again, and it'll try to Face ID you again. It can still fail hard and ask for your passcode, and after five failed attempts, it'll demand it, but overall, this is so much better than before. Second, insta-killing apps. When Apple introduced the new gesture-centric interface for iPhone X, it was super fluid in every way except one. To jettison apps, you had to touch and hold and wait for the X to appear like it was 2008 jiggly mode all over again. With iOS 12, you just swipe up to multitask and then swipe app cards away to kill them, the way nature intended. And yeah, you should never force quit apps in iOS because it wrecks things, but resource abusive apps like Facebook, Messenger, Snapchat, and Pokemon Go still absolutely have it coming. Third, while Apple introduced iCloud Keychain years ago, the lack of any authentication check always prevented me from using it. I just never wanted to have to worry about handing my phone to a stranger in an emergency or even a friend at a conference and also handing them my logins and credit card details. iPhone X introduced Face ID as an authentication check and that was great, but only for iPhone X. Now, iOS 12 adds Touch ID to the system as well, and that means iCloud Keychain is finally a first-class password manager for everyone. Even better, if you're already using a third-party password manager, Apple's integrating those into the autofill system as well, so now it's really win-win all around. Fourth, Siri, turn on the flashlight. I know that sounds minor, but when you're using Siri, it's usually because you can't use your fingers to click and tap through the interface. And just like fixing Siri take a selfie a few years ago was great for when you wanted to instantly take that shot, fixing Siri turn on the flashlight is even better for when it's dark, your hands are full, and you just want there to be light. Fifth, do not disturb on lock screen. Yeah, Apple has a whole new and improved machine learned Siri suggested do not disturb system so it can recommend you go silent if you have a movie pass in your wallet or a lunch date in your calendar. But it's coming out of do not disturb that's always screwed me in the past because I forget to turn it off a damn always. Now though, anytime you're in D&D, it shows up big and bright on the lock screen so it's easy to remember and easy to turn off when you're done with it. So no more missing calls or messages or I guess using D&D as an excuse. Crap. Thanks, Apple. Okay, equal and opposite time. As much as I love these new fixes, there are still several annoyances that remain to be fixed. Let's count them down. Number five, dark mode for iOS. We now have dark mode for Apple Watch, Apple TV, and Mac OS, and it's still nowhere to be found for iOS. Maybe next year. Number four, the volume overlay. I don't mind this so much, but I get so many complaints about it, it's worth a mention. Maybe a subtle mode that works in the status bar instead of center screen. Number three, the home indicator. You know the one, staring back at you on iPhone 10, so bright, so always. Once you get the hint though, it'd be great if you can kill it. Number two, orientation lock minus photos and videos. iOS knows which content can be landscape and which content should be landscape, so please just handle it. Number one, multiple timers. Sure, you can use multiple reminders or multiple alarms as workarounds, even name them, but they don't tell you how much time is left. And if they can have multiples, why not timers? Some of these seem to be wicked obvious, like Apple just needs to fix them. Others are more divisive, with some people wanting them one way and others not. And you can't just keep adding unlimited options to settings. It takes problem solving. That's an art, but it's also a science, and you can learn more about it at brilliant.org vector. They have a ton of terrific courses, including The Joy of Problem Solving, which has Intro to Problem Solving, Truth Tellers and Liars, Crazy Cut Polymino Puzzles, Operator Searches, Coin Rearrangements, Composite Geometry, Matchstick Puzzles, 3D Puzzles, and, and all of them are set up in a way that just makes you actually want to learn. Go to brilliant.org slash vector to sign up for free. And because they're sponsoring the show, the first 200 of you can also get 20% off the premium course. Thanks, Brilliant. So, did Apple fix any of your major gripes in iOS 12? And if they did it, what's still top of your list? Hit like, hit subscribe, and then let me know in the comments. And thank you so much for watching.